After passing MBBS, should you choose to do NEET PG or MRCP? Is there any advantage of doing one over the other? Or can you do both NEET PG and MRCP? Hello and welcome to my channel guys. In today's video, I am going to discuss all these questions, all the details about NEET PG and MRCP. Also, in this video, I will share with you exclusive tips, tricks and hacks so that you can maximize on your NEET PG preparation and pass both NEET PG and MRCP with minimum efforts. So please keep watching this video till the end. This video is the second video of my three part video series where I have discussed in details the medicine training in India versus the medicine training in the UK. So if you have not watched the first video in this three part video series, which was MD medicine versus MRCP, please make sure you watch that video as well. So let's get started with today's video. In today's video, we will explore how NEET PG compares to MRCP UK exam. NEET PG is a very tough exam. You have to read nearly 21 subjects, too many books, notes, mock tests. And even if you've got a good rank, there is reservations, quota, government bonds and whatnot. So often candidates ask me, can I do MRCP instead of NEET PG? Let's explore. In my opinion, these two exams are very, very different from each other. If you compare uh, the format of these exams, NEET PG is a single day theory exam, whereas MRCP comprises of two theory and one practical exam. So one is like a one day cricket match, while the other will take at least two to three years to complete. If you compare the theory exams, NEET PG is mostly about one liners with negative marking, where MRCP is a very, very concept based clinical scenario based exam. Most, most importantly, NEET PG is a competitive exam. So you have to score better in order to get a better rank. So scores matter. Whereas in MRCP, all you have to do is achieve pass marks. Not only the format, but the purpose of the two exams are also very different. If I compare Indian training to UK, then NEET PG is an entry level exam that you need to pass to be eligible for MD medicine training. And only after passing the MD final exam will you get the MD medicine degree. Whereas you don't have any entrance exam in UK to get into internal medicine training or IMT, but you're expected to complete MRCP at the end of IMT to be eligible for the next level of training. So NEET PG is like an entrance exam to get into medicine training, whereas MRCP, as far as the UK training is concerned, is to get into super specialty training. Now, please pay very close attention to this slide where I have compared the Indian training versus the UK medicine training pathways, where you can see that NEET PG is done at the beginning of your medicine training in India, whereas MRCP is expected at the end of your medicine training. That is, you're expected to have substantial clinical experience in medicine at that level. So before jump starting your preparation for NEET PG or MRCP, you should be very clear in your head why you're doing these exams. Is it because you want to learn medicine in India or is it because you want to undertake medicine training in the UK or is it because you want to work outside India as a physician. Also, it is extremely important to determine what stage of your career are you at. Are you sure you want to get into medicine or allied branches like anesthesia, critical care, pathology, pharmacology or microbiology? If you are unsure which specialty you want to pursue, MRCP is probably not the right choice for you and don't waste time, money, energy or resources in running after random exams. Get the correct information before you focus on your goal. However, if you are sure that you want to do MRCP with NEET PG, here's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can be successful in both the exams. If you look at the MRCP part one curriculum, you will notice that you are already reading most of these subjects for your NEET PG preparation. 
For example, basic sciences like anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, pharmacology, pathology and most of the medicine branches as well. So, why not make your NEET PG notes as the base of your MRCP preparation? Top it up with a part 1 question bank and self-assess yourself. How is the pattern different to NEET PG? Which are the topics that you are struggling with? And which are your areas of knowledge gaps? Then plug those gaps from a MRCP book. Okay, this I would say is a very smart way to maximize your NEET PG preparation and clear MRCP part 1 at the same go. Now, in order to better understand the question patterns in MRCP part 1 and how it compares to NEET PG, let's look at a sample question of MRCP part 1. Please read the question very carefully and try to solve it yourself. Hepatitis B and its antibody status is a very important concept and often you may find many questions in NEET PG surrounding this topic. MRCP part 1 is not an exception and the Royal College loves asking questions on this topic. The correct answer here is previous infection with hepatitis B. Okay. Let's look at another example. NEET PG is notorious for its one-liners, whereas MRCP questions are supposed to be more clinical based. However, if you look at this question very carefully, you would notice that this question is nothing but a disguised one-liner, where all it is asking is what is the mechanism of action of clopidogrel. The correct answer is inhibition of binding of ADP. However, not all questions of MRCP part 1 will be such straightforward ones. Most of them will be clinical application based. Let's look at an example. If you read this question carefully, you would see that this is asking about a 35 year old woman with CKD stage 5 who is being planned for erythropoietin therapy. Now we all know EPO is used to improve the anemia status. Right, But the question is not asking that. It is asking what is the most likely outcome of the given options. So here you have to apply the concepts of anemia and its management to arrive at the correct answer which is improved exercise tolerance. Got it? The next level of questions will be slightly tougher. Let's look at this one. Here it talks about treatment of Tophaceous gout with allopurinol. Here is a patient who has been started on allopurinol for his gouty tophi. Following that, he has developed acute inflammation of the small and the large joints of his body. This is a simple concept where we all know that allopurinol therapy can precipitate acute gout. Right? Again, concepts similar to need PG but the presentation of the questions are slightly different. So, like I said, if you use your NEET PG preparation knowledge and apply them for your MRCP preparation, with a little bit of concept building, you will be able to answer these questions very easily. Let's look at MRCP part 2 now. The MRCP part 2 curriculum does not involve any clinical science or statistics or any of that. This is core medicine like cardio, endocrine, gastro, infectious disease, etc. Now, MRCP part 2 preparation is tricky. It is a difficult exam and you would really need to understand and love medicine before you can pass it in the first attempt. The questions are tougher. They are very concept based. They are very, very close options, close distractors that you have to fully distinguish between before you arrive at the correct answer. These are not database questions. They are pure clinical concept based, no need PG one-liners. You have to have substantial clinical experience in medicine before you can pass this exam. So I would say ideally take this exam in your second year of MD medicine. Now MRCP part two preparation can be started with your MRCP part one notes and with the textbook of medicine. This is exactly what I did. I just used my MRCP part 1 notes and then scribbled next to it the extra bits of information that was needed for MRCP part 2. 
top that up with a question bank now many many candidates ask me this question do i really need a textbook of medicine or i can just do a couple of question banks for mrcp part 2 now as i said mrcp part 2 is not an easy exam i would definitely definitely recommend a textbook of medicine as your mentor for mrcp question banks yes they are all right but they will not cover all the topics and concepts that are in the mrcp part 2 curriculum you will definitely struggle i'm not saying that people do not pass with just question banks but you know you won't be confident you will keep second guessing the options and even after coming out of the exam hall you will never be sure whether you answered the questions correctly or not the next important question is which textbook of medicine I have read Harrison during my MD medicine and most of us do in India so I am always biased and partial to Harrison because I think this is like this is the bible for medicine for me and I know not many people are fans of Harrison but I would say that's because they haven't read Harrison but hey no pressure if you're not comfortable with harrison pick any book that you like it could be kumar and clark it could be davison it could even be oxford handbook of clinical medicine it's up to you whichever book you're comfortable with but please please don't attempt mrcp part 2 without a textbook of medicine most of all though you would need your clinical judgment to complete your preparation now why do i say that Let's look at an MRCP part 2 style question and you will understand why you will need clinical judgment as well as a strong theory background. Please read the question carefully before you attempt to answer it. This is an 80 year old female who is otherwise fit and active presenting with low back pain currently on simple analgesia. The blood investigations have been mentioned and they want you to distinguish between an active multiple myeloma amyloidosis lymphoma mgas or plasmacytoma so this is what i'm talking about guys you have to know what on earth is an mgas and what is a plasmacytoma and how is that different from multiple myeloma that's why yes a good question bank but most importantly a textbook the answer for this question is mgas that is because though the patient has evidence of hypergamma globulinemia the patient does not have hypercalcemia or renal failure or anemia okay another example classic mrcp very very favorite concept of rcp a 65 year old male who is on end stage renal failure has renovascular disease is on warfarin has a uh, livid reticularis and painful ulceration on his shins the answer to this question is cholesterol embolization the basic idea is just to give you a flavor of uh, the questions that you can expect with mrcp part 2 and how they are different from neat pg but like i said uh, the basic concepts of medicine remain the same all you need to do is just learn those extra bits go that extra mile to clear your concepts and it will be very easy for you to pass mrcp part 2 whilst doing your md medicine okay now most importantly paces uh you have to work hard there is no shortcut and uh, as i keep saying with the right guidance and the right strategies you will definitely pass in the first attempt don't let anyone tell you otherwise you can do it you will do it and i will continue sharing in my upcoming videos the exclusive tips strategies hacks that i use to do my mrcp after doing my md medicine that's it for today guys i hope this video was useful and please let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this video if you did like this video do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that i stay motivated to bring more such up to date content to you till then stay safe keep studying and ace your mrcp